Hey guys, how are you today? Alright, we are going to discuss memorial beads, of which these are some. Um, what are memorial beads? So memorial beads are traditionally beads that are made out of dried flower petals um, from flowers you've received uh, because of a special event. So um, most especially um, like flowers that you get when somebody passes away. And um, you dry the flower petals and then make them into beads. Now, traditionally, you just mix the dried flower petals with a few other things, to basically turn them into a clay and make beads. I thought, well, why can't you just use resin? This is the 21st century and mix them with some resin, and maybe a little glitter. And so, of course, yes, you can, because see? <laughs> so I'm gonna show you how I did this. I will preface this by saying, I am by no means a resin expert. I am just playing and pouring round beads is really difficult to get them perfect. They're just not going to be perfect and you have to be okay with that. Um, pouring something that's flat on the back like these dragon eggs that I've done before in previous videos and the wings, feathers, these are much easier. I also have a square bead mold. Um, that's much easier. It does have one side that's kind of not perfectly flat. You could, of course, sand this down and then polish it. I don't want to be bothered, so I probably never will, and I'll probably just use it the way it is. Um, I don't mind that it's imperfect. I also have a mold that does um, a resin replica of a crystal, so you could do a memorial crystal. All of these were all done the same way with just different molds. So I'm gonna show you how I did them. I'm gonna get everything set up and I'll be right back. Okay, the first thing you're gonna need, of course, are dried flower petals. There's, you know, you could buy them. You could just go pick them. If your um, husband or, or partner gives you a flower bouquet for say Valentine's Day or your anniversary, you could save some flower petals and dry them. Um, these are dried rose petals. They're from, I have a bag of dried, I have a drawer of nature stuff. And this is one of the things in the drawer. And these are dried rose petals from a few different places. My grandmother's funeral, um, bouquets my husband has gotten me, things like that. And um, so I'm gonna just pull a couple petals out and stick them in this little small paper cup. Um, these, they're too big the way they are to make beads out of. So you need to crunch them up and or cut them up. So the first thing I'll do is just crunch them up with my fingers. I really should get some kind of a grinder or something at some point. Would be really handy if I'm going to keep doing this. Okay, then I'm going to just take a little pair of scissors and I'm going to just spend a couple seconds here chopping them up in the cup which helps you keep them sort of all contained. You want to get them as small as possible if you're making these beads. Um, I will leave a link in the description for these molds. I bought them on Amazon. I will tell you like I said already the round bead mold is challenging. Okay so you want something that's like chopped up like that. At least that small, if not smaller. As small as you can get it is better. Okay, so if you're going to need some of those, you're going to need some glitter. I chose red to go with the dark red purpley color of the flower petals. You're going to need some um, epoxy resin. I'm using easy cast, clear casting epoxy. I've got some molds and you're going to need a cup to mix in and you're going to need some popsicle sticks and gloves. You should wear gloves anytime you're working with something like resin. You should have your fan on and be working in a well-ventilated area even though this is a low odor uh, product from EasyCast. Always take precaution. And I'm working over a nonstick mat so that any bits and pieces that fall on here and dry on here, I actually can peel them off And I might be able to actually use these in, you know, as a, an embellishment on some other future project. Because, uh, you know, I'm not going to throw it away. <laughs> it's interesting. Don't make fun of me. <laughs> All right. Now, these are, of course, the two molds I said I had. I have the square and the round. The square one is much easier to do because you just pour it straight in. The round one is a lot more challenging to do. Um, this resin takes 48 hours to completely cure. 
So I have found after doing a couple batches that I like to take the beads out after 24 hours. They're hard enough to pull out of the mold, but they're still a bit flexible. And the beads will have, let me find one um, from this morning's pull. Like this one. So they, the, no matter how careful you are with pouring them, the beads are going to have like a flat spot. Can you see that? And I'm okay with them not being perfect, but because they're still kind of soft, I can actually take my finger around the edge of that flat spot and I can push that ridge down a little bit and just smooth it out a bit so it's less obvious. Oops, there we go. So it's just less obvious. And then it's something that, yeah, I'm okay with. Um, all right, so now we're going to mix our resin. So you want to do equal parts of part A and the hardener. I have actually a little scale here. I'm going to put the cup on there. And I have a number of different molds, so I just kind of wing it as far as how much resin I need, and I'm going to be adding stuff to it. Um, so you don't have to do it that way. You could fill your mold with water and then dump that into a cup to measure how much. Um, that'll give you an idea of how much resin you need um, to fill the mold. I'm going to just wing it. That's what I've been doing. All right, so I'm going to pour this. I'm going to shoot for like 0.3 ounces to... I forgot to get a stick out. Those are important. Okay, so now we want equal amount of the hardener. So I'm going to pour it until it says six. Then I'm going to mix it for two minutes. So you want to make sure you mix it thoroughly um, according to the package directions. This one says to mix it for two minutes. You want to make sure it's really well mixed or it's, it's not going to harden properly if you don't. Um, with a round mold, you you never really completely get all the air bubbles out, even though this is one uh, a kind of epoxy that's supposed to, um, I, I want to say outgas. I don't think that's the right term. Um, release the air bubbles on its own. They're supposed to like automatically rise to the surface. I find that the round with the round mold, they just don't. They get trapped. You can release a few of the air bubbles with the torch lightly over the mold, but you won't ever get them all. You just have to kind of be okay with that. Because I add glitter and things to the mix, it's not that big a deal because the, bu the bubbles don't really show up with the way I make the beads. With the square ones, you have more surface um, on the top of the bead, so you can really get rid of all of the air bubbles easily. They're much more clear of, of a bead than the round ones. I got lucky with the... the um, ones that look like crystals, to be honest with you. Okay, we have less than a minute. Make sure you're like scraping the sides and getting everything out. last minute it's like seems like it's a long time there we go okay now you're supposed to like transfer it to another cup and then um, stir it some more and I never do that I just use the same cup I'm gonna dump all my flower petals in that I have 
I'm going to dump in a variety of glitters and um, microbeads. These are red microbeads. So I just grabbed a bunch of the stuff I have, you know, kind of been hoarding for a while. And there's no recipe, just dump some in. A few different colors of red, different textures of glitter. Okay, and then give it another stir. You want to have it be really well mixed. Make sure again that you scrape the sides. Yeah, and I have something that's really dark. See that? Okay. So we are going to do the round mold. I'm going to put these other molds aside. And we're going to zoom in. So this is how I've been doing this. <laughs> this mold is really tough to fill. I'll be honest with you. It's really tough to fill. So you're going to need your stick. So see this little this little post in the middle? That's the part that the resin dries around to give you the hole in the middle of your bead. So when I'm filling it initially, I put I take my stick and I push pull the little post to the side. And then I try really hard to just drip it in. But you always end up with a like blob on the top like that. So then I take another stick and push it in. And then you keep doing that until that part of the mold is full and then you move to the next one. It takes a few minutes. There's really no shortcut. The square one is really easy to fill. The round one is hard, more challenging. And mostly because I put so much stuff in the resin. I think if I was just pouring clear resin or tinted resin without the flower petals in it, it wouldn't be so hard to fill it. You do want to fill it all the way to the top and it's really hard to get it to where it's just enough to the top to give you a nice round bead and not too much to the top where you're going to get a flat spot. That's the trick to it. And I've poured these a couple of times and I'm still figuring that perfect place out. I think you just have to practice. top it off. Okay, so now we'll go to the next one. So I'm going to fill these as far as this resin will let me go and I'll be right back. Okay, so I got seven round beads out of that. I'm going to tap the molds on the table. That will, in theory, help me release some of the air bubbles. Then I'm going to take my little torch and really quickly and really lightly just run it over the top here and pop some of the bubbles. Keep your fingers out of the way, do it really quickly. There we go. And that's the best you're going to be able to do. You could probably come back in a little while and try to do it again and get some more bubbles, but I found that it doesn't really make that big of a difference. So you need to let this dry for 24 hours before you even try and unmold them. And like I said, once you do unmold them, you will probably have a little ridge or a flat spot. It'll still be soft enough though to push down on that with your finger. And you'll get something that looks like this with all the glitter and flower petals embedded inside of it. If you get resin on your craft mat that's wet, I recommend you take a piece of scrap paper and push it down into the wet resin 
and leave it sit here for at least 24 hours and let it cure. And when you peel it up, you're going to have an interesting piece of resin paper that you can use in your mixed media. So this is just my way of playing with resin. Again, I am by no means an expert. Um, there are some great channels out there that really do know what they're doing, much more than I do. I'm going to link um, one of them in the description below, and I will um, continue playing with my resin and sharing with you uh, what I find. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you want to be a member of one of my two Facebook groups or support my channel by shopping in the Etsy shop, send me happy mail, send me an email, any of those things, look in the video description because the information how to do all that is down there. And uh, please like, share, and subscribe. And the most important thing, go out and have a great day, everybody. Do something nice for yourself because you deserve it, and I'll see you later. Bye, guys.